Hello and welcome to this week's Chairside Live episode. I'm here live from the Glidewell International Technology Center. So what we have here is a operatory that's equipped with the latest technology, uh, including a chairside scanner. Um, right here we have the 3M uh, chairside scanner, intraoral scanner. And uh, Dr. Chi is uh, working on one of our patients in the uh, operatory. Uh, the patients here, a lot of them are, are our employees. So they get the benefit of having uh, dental work completed here, and we get the benefit of uh, product development and testing out a lot of different products. Today's product is the Bruxer Now, and I wanna go over uh, some of the treatment workflow that we go through. Um, besides utilizing the intraoral scanner uh, and uh, prepping the tooth chair side, uh, once we capture the impression digitally, uh, we'll go ahead and move over to our uh, dental laboratory, which is connected to the operatory. So why don't we go ahead and go over and take a look at what we can utilize in the dental laboratory in order to fabricate a final restoration. So what we have here is a dental laboratory that's within an operatory that's within an even bigger dental laboratory. And in this room, uh, we're equipped with the TS-150 chairside mill. Uh, this mill is capable of milling out different types of material, one of them being uh, the case of the week for this week, the Bruxer Now. Uh, what usually happens is after we take the intraoral scan of the tooth that's prepared, uh, we send the information over to this computer that's equipped with the Fast Design software. Uh, the Fast Design software allows the clinician to design the restoration, the final restoration, and send it over to the TS-150 mill. Uh, once the information is over through the mill, uh, there is uh, a kiosk here where we go through four different steps. Uh, and uh, we press play and essentially um, the mill does the rest of the work. Uh, once we retrieve the restoration from the mill, we can, if we would like, we can go ahead and do some staining uh, after the mill. Uh, for the Bruxer now, we actually don't need to do any staining. We can go ahead and polish and deliver uh, within 45 minutes uh, of the uh, start of the mill time. So why don't we go ahead and take a look at this week's uh, case of the week. I think you're going to really enjoy it. The case that we're going to work on today is number 19 that was previously endodontically treated and restored a few years ago with a cast metal restoration. So ever since the restoration was placed, the patient was not very pleased with the aesthetics of it. So we are going to replace it with a Bruxer Now material where we're going to be able to scan, uh, digitally scan the impression, design it right here in the operatory and mill out a restoration within the same appointment. And there's a little bit of an open margin on the distal, so we'll be able to provide a better fitting restoration and something that is very highly aesthetic. All right, so the first part of this procedure, of course, is to remove the old restoration. In this case, on a mandibular first molar on the mesial buccal groove area. So one of the greatest challenges that dental laboratories face when restoring full coverage indirect restorations is a lack of occlusal clearance. So one of my favorite products is an occlusal clearance tab, and they come in different thicknesses. This one in particular is one and a half millimeters, which should be sufficient for a full coverage zirconia, monolithic zirconia restoration. And so for the clearance tab, when the patient bites down all the way into centric, if the tab doesn't pull through, then that indicates there is an additional need for reduction. Go ahead and open, please. Here you can see on the preparation, the areas that are marked in red, that I will reduce a little bit more to provide space for the material. On the axial surfaces, I like to use a round-ended tapered diamond to provide the proper taper and reduction. And for a full contour zirconia, we're shooting for about one millimeter on the axial surfaces. So there's a little bit of a, a gouge here on the prep that I'm gonna use a build-up material to fill in. For these CAD CAM restorations, we really want to try to have the preparation as smooth as possible. So I'll just fill that in and blend that into the rest of the preparation. So once the axial surfaces are reduced, you want to ensure you have a clear finish line. And I like to ensure that I can trace along the axial line angles along the shoulder of the margin to ensure that I can see that there are no undercuts because that's very important whenever we're milling these CAD CAM restorations. So even though we are taking a digital impression, 
The fundamentals of good dentistry must be followed for indirect restorations, and that is proper tooth preparation and sufficient gingival retraction to ensure that you can see the margins in the digital impression. We first placed a triple zero cord to first displace the gingiva vertically. So here we're placing the second cord, a size two, and this will help displace the gingiva laterally away from the margins. And we'll let this sit for a few minutes. So once the retraction cords are placed, we'll place a copper cap on top of the cord and we'll have the patient bite down on the copper cap for about five minutes. So we're gonna go ahead and take the digital impressions using the 3M True Definition Scanner. So the first set of scans will be of the preparation and the adjacent teeth. You want to ensure that you capture the contours of the adjacent teeth because that is what the software will use to create the initial design proposal. And it's also good for yourself to analyze and know exactly how wide buccal lingually, mesial distally to design the restoration. For the second set of scans, we're going to capture the opposing dentition. So for the third set of scans, we're going to acquire the bite registration and that's simply scanning the buccal surfaces of the prepared area and the opposing teeth. Ensuring that you capture the teeth adjacent to the prep, the teeth opposing the prep, and it's also good to get the gingival margins on both sides because that is what the software will use to stitch the two previous models, the prep and the opposing, together. And this will be sent to our chair side design workstation. So once the prescription is filled out, the case is sent wirelessly to the design software. On the margin page, you can see if you provide sufficient tissue retraction, you should have a very clear finish line. In this case, whenever you fabricate restorations chair side, you or your assistant is now the one responsible for marking the margins. So digital dentistry really does make you a better clinician by allowing you to see your preparations immediately. You do need to ensure that you can see your margins clearly. Now I may proceed on to the next step, which will be indicating to the software which direction the buccal surface of this design will face. It's just a matter of bringing this arrow, directing that to the buccal. Now I can move on to the next step, where the software is going to look at the adjacent teeth and determine the ideal position and size and shape of our design for this particular case. Here I'm able to move the design buccal lingually or up and down. It's pretty much just pre-planning the position of this design. There's not a lot that really needs to be done here because the software intuitively takes into account the adjacent teeth and decides what the ideal shape, buccal lingual position, mesial distal position will be for this case. As far as the contacts goes, we have an option right here where we can edit the contacts to whatever specifications you like. So right here on the occlusal surface, I can see some areas that might be high, and I can dial in any value, and this is in microns, any value for the contacts that works for me. Once I determine a value that works for my restorations, I can pre-select it, and then by a click of a button, the software automatically will adjust all of the occlusal contacts to that desired value. So once the software prompts me to load the material, I'm gonna go ahead and retrieve the burr and the milling block from the Bruxer Now box. Here's our A2 shade. I'm gonna go ahead and seat the block into the milling unit. So while the milling process un is underway for number 19, one of the greatest benefits to having an in-office CAD CAM system is you can provide other dentistry for the patient while the restoration is being milled. So in this situation, we are going to replace the amalgam fillings on tooth number 18. So now after about 40, 45 minutes, the milling unit is completed and I'm gonna open the cover and remove the restoration from the milling chamber. 
We have our finished number 19 crown. So after the sprue is removed, I'm going to apply a diamond polishing paste. In this case, I'm using the Diasheen fine version and also a soft bristle Robinson brush. Get a little bit of the paste onto the, onto the Robinson brush and apply this to all the axial surfaces. After trying in the restoration, it's important to clean out the internal surface, especially if you're going to bond this restoration in. Here we are going to conventionally cement it. But to clean it out, you can either use a sandblaster using aluminum oxide, or in this case, we're using IvoClean, which actually attracts the phosphates from the saliva and removes them from the internal aspect of the restoration. With the IvoClean, you allow it to interact for about 20 seconds and then clean out the excess. Once I seat the restoration, I ensure that the margins are sealed. And we're going to allow a couple minutes for the cement to fully cure. So one of the advantages of using a conventional cement is the ease of cleanup. Once it is fully set, you can just easily tease the excess cement off of the restoration. So today we were able to provide a same day restoration in the Bruxer now and taking advantage of an in-office CAD CAM system, delivering the crown within the same appointment.